Hello everyone. So hello everyone. I'm just waiting for um, some more to come on. It's I think it's noon now. Kind of press the button before I was already there, but Dr. Rose here coming to you guys um, as promised with a discussion of how we respond um, to st stress and trauma. I think it's very timely that we have this discussion because I've actually been seeing a lot of um, posts on my timeline of individuals complaining about sleep difficulties. Um, I've received messages from clients and friends who are discussing just dreams they're having that are very disturbing, people reporting even physical responses um, that they're experiencing. And of course, with any type of physical response that we're experiencing now, that's not um, of a typical nature for us, we're concerned. But I just want to come and just kind of just provide a, a platform for you guys to kind of understand what could potentially be going on with you all um, emotionally, um, physically, as well as behaviorally. Um, because when we are experiencing the type of trauma, the type of crises that we are experiencing now, your body, your mind, we don't know how to process all of this. I just got word this morning that a very dear friend of mine is in the hospital battling this virus. And it, it kind of... Um, just took me out just to hear that news. And um, even though I'm trained, I'm trained in helping people to deal with their emotions, to deal, to understand their behaviors and understand the effect that all of that has even on us physically. Um, this is a lot. It's a lot for all of us to, to comprehend, to try to process. And I just wanna come first of all and just say, I want you all to just rest assured what you're experiencing is normal. I want to normalize it. I want you guys to understand it. And I want to just help provide some type of guidance in how to cope with all of this. So I welcome you all on. Um, share this with friends. You can start a watch party if you like, just to invite other people in as well. So yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, all the days, this is part of the trauma response. Like we don't know when one day ends and another day begins, right? But I believe it was yesterday. I woke up with just this pressing desire to create um, a visual chart of what a lot of us are possibly experiencing. And those of you who follow me on my timeline, you um, possibly saw the chart and I'm going to kind of share it now. We're going, we're going to go over it a bit, but I want, I want you guys to do as I'm discussing this, I want you, if you are experiencing any of these things yourself, you know, give me a check mark, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, because I want you guys to understand again that what you are potentially experiencing is not abnormal. It's, um, it's definitely part of this trauma response. Our coping mechanisms are being taxed like they've never been taxed before. And um, inevitably, we're going to experience a lot of these things that I have on the list. So I just want to just start discussing a few of these. So let's talk about some of the behavioral responses that you may be experiencing now. And I'm on Instagram as well as Facebook Live. So sometimes I'll turn the page so they can see it as well. But behaviorally, how many of you are feeling like you want to isolate? And we're isolating already, right, with this social distancing, but even more so, like you're at home and everyone knows you're at home, but you're not even feeling like picking up the phone and talking to people. You don't want to even have conversations. Um, I've had people text me and I don't have even a desire to even text back, especially if it's news of yet another person who's been afflicted. So this need or this desire to want to isolate, these are behavioral responses, things you may notice differently in your behavior. Um, low frustration tolerance. So you feel like your tolerance is really low. You're very irritable. You're like a fuse that's just ready to go off. Hypervigilant. See a lot of that. See a lot of lashing out on social media now. See a lot of people responding to other individuals' posts, you know, with very harsh or cruel words. Um, short fused avoidance. Unhealthy eating habits. I'm, I'm sure all, all of you are reading that as well from individuals. Um, increased use of alcohol or drugs, overeating, aggression, procrastination, 
low motivation. And this can be particularly difficult for those of us who are now working at home, which most people are, if you're available to do that or able to do it. But you just don't have the motivation to even do your work. Um, I've been doing some of the contractual work that I do from home now and typically what would take me in a, maybe a four hour period to take care of, it's been stretched out for maybe eight, nine hours throughout the day because it's just like, you know, I'm taking breaks. I'm, I'm just, my mind is elsewhere. Um, increased risk taking. This is a behavioral response to trauma you will find because our personal freedom we feel is being um, thwarted at this time, you know, being mandated to, you know, stay home, stay safe. Um, there is, is something we call psychological reactance in my um, field. And it's just this desire to, because you feel like your personal freedom is being jeopardized, a, a desire to do just the opposite of what you should do. So you could see people having increased risk taking. I know there are a lot of posts in the Detroit area where we are here now with a lot of outrage, something that went on at Rouge Park, a large gathering of individuals. That was, uh, you know, that's some risk-taking behavior. And I know it upsets us all, especially those of us who have been affected directly by loved ones and friends that have been stricken or even taken away by this virus when we see people not taking it serious. But I want you guys to understand that part of that not taking it serious is that behavioral response to trauma, just increased risk-taking, this, 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 you know, they don't know another way to be um, react to it other than to feel as though, you know, you're not going to take my personal freedom away. I'm going to still um, interact and navigate life like I have always done, but we can't do that now. We can't. And, and this is a danger, you know, if you find yourself doing that. You will find yourself even more accident prone because our mind is elsewhere now, because we're, you know, just have so much heaviness on our mind, not just the heaviness, the the psyche is trying to process this, this new life we found ourselves in. If someone would have told us two and a half weeks ago that we would be where we are today, that I would be having this talk with you guys that I'm having today, none of us would probably have believed it. So because the brain just naturally wants to process and make sense of things that are out of the ordinary, you won't be paying attention to even where you're walking, you know, if you're cutting vegetables, if you are, you know, you may find yourself more clumsy than you typically are. Um, and so that's, again, a behavioral response. Now, let's look at some of the emotional responses that people will experience as, and like I said, this is on my timeline. So if you guys follow me on social media, you'll see this on my timeline. Some of the emotional responses increase anxiety. That goes without saying. Um, increased fearfulness, people that we consider the go-to people, you know. Um, I have a lot of folks consider me the go-to person, you know. I'm I'm that glass always half full type of person, but I'm fearful, okay? And I'm okay with saying that because the last thing I'm going to do is come on live to you all and try to pretend like um, I don't have any fear when it comes to what's going on right now because there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety with all of us, and that's not normal. This feeling of just being numb. The other morning, I, I forget, I think it was Thursday morning, I posted something and I just woke up because I was very emotional that day, you know, seeing all the the the, the passings of, of these bright beacon of lights that we've had um, in our society and our city here. And there was a feeling of just being numb, just being disconnected and detached. Like it almost feels like we're in this collective nightmare, right? Like it's not real. When will we wake up from this? Um, feeling depression. Depression is definitely an increase. You know, I've had several sessions this morning. And that's the thing, even on top of everything going on. I want to encourage you guys to reach out, okay? I've had several sessions, even some this morning, with healthcare professionals who are on the front lines in the hospital. And so they're not getting a break. This is like they're working double shifts, just trying to save lives, but putting themselves, you know, at risk. So you can only imagine um, just what they're dealing with, having to be focused um, in the midst of trying to process everything that's going on. Irritability. You may find yourself or people that you care for taking everything so personally, you know, um, things um, that you may have said that you weren't intending to offend someone. Someone takes offense to it. Um, feeling of guilt. How many of you, and I want you, if you have, again, give me a thumbs up or a heart. 
feelings of guilt the other morning. I woke up with this overwhelming sense of guilt. And I want to tell you why. Um, for years, you know, I've been I've been working this contractual position for 14 years now. And I've been for years like, oh my gosh, it would be so great if we can do this from home. I don't have to see people. It's not one of those personal contact um, type positions. I just um, review medical records and things of that sort. And so there's been this desire of, oh, oh, it would be so great if we'll, we're able to someday be able to work from home. And of course, in the last week, you know, just like that, it happened. And there were some other things that were going on that I've been long hoping for that happened. But all of this stuff is happening as a result to crises. So I found myself sitting here like feeling guilty and actually, you know, having tears come to my eyes because on the one hand, this stuff that I've been wanting to happen that I was going to be so happy about when it happened is happening because of this crisis. And so a lot of people out there may be experiencing guilt. Even those of you who have lost individuals, you'll hear, you're, you may fear uh, or start feeling some survivor, survivor guilt um, occurring in your life. You know, I was at a function where we now know, I was at a function on February 29th, where we now know two individuals at that um, event actually died, you know? I'm not going to apologize for getting emotional because this is an emotional time. And so you think about it, you know, we take things for such things for granted. Um, and you wonder, you know, if I had contact with this person, why is this person sick and I'm not? Or why is this person um, now not even here anymore? And I'm not, you know, and I'm here and I'm able to come to you guys and I'm able to sit out here and enjoy this view and, you know, eat good food and eat good dinners and things of that sort. And this is just, this is just part of that process. You know, our brain's trying to normalize everything that's going on. Um... And like I said, I'm not going to apologize, guys. I'm not going to apologize for getting emotional. It's, we have to let it come up and come out, right? We have to do that. And I want to just, you know, really impart on you guys. If you have not been personally affected, I pray you don't. But the chances are you will within the next week or two. You will be affected. You will know someone close to you um, that's affected with this, okay? Um and I see Camille, Camille Banks says she was there too. She, her last conversation with, with her friend, you know, feeling this sense of guilt here. Um, so disorientation to, you know, just confused, losing things. You know, I lost my keys. I lost a set of keys for like a week, you know, um, I could not find them anywhere. I mean, we tore this house up trying to find where these keys. And then I found them. I had put them in like a Ziploc bag with some random stuff, like not even paying attention. So again, just cognitively, our mind is not there. Um, these feeling, feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. Because honestly, guys... You know, there is a there is a sense of like helplessness here. I don't want to say hopelessness because we're going to get through this. OK, every storm runs out of rain. We're not going to be in this forever. We can look at the countries that started this whole process months ago and we can see them getting back to some sense of normalcy. And we're going to be getting back to some sense of normalcy as well. You know, hopefully sooner than later. But that's going to depend on collectively what we do to stop the spread of this virus here. Okay, and then what we have to do in the meantime is, is honor ourselves, honor our emotions, but also implement the tools that we know will just help us to try to remain as emotionally healthy as we can. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and, and, and pretend like I can come on this broadcast today and tell you guys some steps you can do that can take all this pain away or this fear away, or this anxiety away, because right now that's not it. We are, there are three types of trauma. You know, you have acute trauma. You have, and that's trauma that comes and it's gone. You know, um, a car accident, it comes, you know, you recover, it's gone. But we're in what's called a complex trauma right now because not all, because every single day, several times a day, we're hearing more individuals that we know that are being stricken, that are leaving us. You know, um, we're being inundated with the reality of what's going on right now. So again, this is not an attempt to sugarcoat. Those who, uh, those of you who know me know I'm probably one of the most positive people you know of. But I'm not going to come on here and fake like. 
we should be feeling the way we feel right now, okay? Um, difficulty concentrating and or remembering things, flashbacks of the past, unpleasant memories. So in the, when you've, and all of us have been traumatized in the past before, but where we are now, we've never been in the history of men. You know, we know 1918, they experienced something similar to this. But unless you're 100 plus years old, you know, and even if you're over 100, you were a child, so you probably don't remember what happened back in 1918. But we are all at a place we've never, ever been in our lives. Our great grandchildren will be talking about this global pandemic, you know, many generations from now and what it did, you know, to our um, generation. Um, so I, I, I want you guys to understand that it's not unusual for you to have flashbacks of past traumas that you may have experienced. You may be finding yourself dreaming more about experiences that were traumatic or having very unpleasant dreams. And this is, again, this is what I want you guys to understand. This is your brain attempting to process it. Many years ago, Probably about 20 years ago, I went and got trained um, as a, a, a debriefer, a critical incident stress debriefer. So I was trained to go into facilities where some traumatic event um, has happened to help the individuals process it, like right there on the spot. So I would go into banks an hour after they've been robbed at gunpoint to get all the employees together and go through a, a, a set, you know, um, just a prescribed steps to help their brain process it. Because what we do know is that if we allow ourselves to process and we don't try to, as Camille said, don't turn the chemicals and things of that sort, if we allow ourselves to process what's going on. It lessens the likelihood of this having lasting, emo lasting emotional effects on us later on down the line. So one of the things I really want to encourage you guys to do is process this. Talk about it. It doesn't have to be your entire conversation all day long, but share how you're feeling. Cry if you need to cry. You know, I'm I'm probably one of the least emotional people, you know, as far as demonstrative emotionally that individuals may know, but I, I found myself in a whole new, um, just a whole new river right now of emotions that I'm just honoring them and letting them come up and come out as they need to. But I need you guys to also... Um, process. Allow yourself to, and process doesn't mean watching the news 24 seven. That just further re-traumatizes you. Process doesn't mean being on social media, reading all the bad news, the conspiracy theories, uh, you know, the chain letters, all of that stuff that just help that re-traumatize. Process is honoring where you are, you know, sitting down and say, where am I emotionally? How do I feel right now? I feel sad or I feel scared or I feel angry. Last week I shared, shared a chart about the um, the stages, six stages of the corona crises, uh, you know, of this social distancing. And a lot of us now are in this angry and depressed stage, okay? We're in this angry and depressed and fearful stage. And, and that's normal. And honor it, you know, talk about it. Um, be gentle with yourself with that. We have to process this because if we hold it in, it's going to wreak havoc on us, not just emotionally, but physically as well. And right now, what we need more than ever is to keep our immune systems healthy. And keeping your immune system healthy involves you being able to let things out as they come up. Um, physical. What are some of the physical things you guys may be feeling? And I want to definitely touch on this because I see a lot of people and I've, I've talked to a few friends who will discuss some of the physical manifestations that they're feeling, but then they're concerned that physical manifestation they have is actually the virus because some of the same symptoms that people have with the virus, you know, hyperventilating, difficulty breathing may just actually be a result of this whole trauma process. So physically, you may be feeling insomnia, which is, you know, you can't sleep. You know, the other night I went to bed at four o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And I typically don't do that. I was working on um, uploading one of my sound meditation videos, but I could have did it in the morning, but it's just like losing all sense of time or hypersomnia. Some of you may find that you're sleeping more than usual. You know, uh, again, the other morning, I woke up at 1030 in the morning and that's so, you know, late for me is seven o'clock in the morning to wake up. So you may be experiencing that exhaustion, exhaustion, aches and pains. We oftentimes have somatic 
manifestations when we are under stress and trauma. So now I, I want to share this. Um, years ago, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, illness. It's like a digestive illness. It's not quite the, it's as severe as Crohn's, but it's in that Crohn's category because I know how to cope because I know my tools. I do the sound meditation. You know, I do everything that I know um, will help that. I have not had a flare up, you know, in years. Like I haven't had a flare up in probably about three years. This week, flare up. This week, the pain was back. And I knew, you know, what the cause was with that. Because again, our body is trying to just make sense of all of this that's going on. Um, headaches, back aches, pains. Um, sun sweating and or heart palpitations because anxiety will cause um, heart palpitations, even nausea. People expressing feeling like sick to their stomach or they can't eat, they can't hold food down. Now, I don't want you guys, and this is where we have to have the fine line, because on the one hand, these are symptoms to be concerned about you know, and not to ignore. But on the other hand, understand that it's very possible that these physical manifestations that you're feeling is a result of the, the stress and the trauma and your, your psyche, your emotional attempt to just cope with all of this. Our coping systems are being taxed like they've never been taxed before. And I wanted to definitely come to you guys today because, you know, the reality, the reality of it is that we're not even at the peak yet. Like we're, we're here, you know, and from what all the experts are saying is that we're going to really see just the, the peak within the next couple of weeks. And I need everyone, you know, to just be very vigilant in, in your own self-care and those people around you, um, just to encourage them to be vigilant with it as well. Um, you may be more susceptible to colds and illnesses during this time. And as I mentioned for myself, what has occurred, a chronic illness flare up, um, loss of appetite, loss of interest and in once enjoyable, um, activities, low sex drive, like all of this, uh, goes right along to what we are experiencing collectively now. So what are some coping uh, mechanisms. I see Jaquita said her migraines are back after two years. Yeah. And and I'm telling you, um, I'm telling you, it was just a surprise to me because I'm, I'm just so proud how I've managed over the years, you know, that the, the illness that I've dealt with and then to have that pain come Monday and it was a familiar pain. I know what it is. And it's just like, Oh, here we go again, you know? Um, and I know it was nothing but the stress. So what are some things that we can do to cope? Uh, and as I said, there's no magic pill here. There's nothing. <sighs> what I want you guys to leave this broadcast most with is understanding everything you're feeling is normal. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you some magic pill or magic coping strategies that's going to make this an easy ride for any of us. Okay. Um, but some things you can do is mobilize your support system and understand who your support system is. The support system is not the individual that's calling you to tell you all the time, you know, the play by play of the news stories because, and you can be, you can be honest with people too. You can tell them, look, um, especially our loved one, because people, we don't know what to do. So a lot of times the reporting of the news is, is for some people, their coping mechanism to let everybody know, did you hear this? Did you know this happened? But it's okay for you to even let those individuals know, you know, I'm not in a place emotionally where I can take any more news like this. So I'm just going to ask if you can, you know, don't share. You don't need to share everything with me, but mobilize. I want everybody to mobilize a good support system. You know, thank God we have these platforms, social media, we have Zoom, you know, my sisters and I, and my niece, and uh, we all did like a virtual happy hour earlier in the week. We have these um, platforms that we can utilize um, just to feel some type of connectedness since we're all practicing this social distance distancing. So make sure you mobilize a support system, but recognize who your support system is. Um, talk about these experiences with em empathic listeners, you know, empathic listeners, not the one we don't need to hear conspiracy theories right now. I, um, one of the young ladies who was well known in the city who passed earlier this week, um, her brother went live earlier this week. And one of the things he shared is that, 
we don't need to, I don't want to hear or anybody else, um, and this is his word, sending me anything else about these conspiracy theories about where this all came from. That's not helping any of us right now. So let's, you know, you want to make sure that the people you are reaching out to for support are empathetic um, and that they too are in a place where they are honoring where their emotions are. Um, exercising. We are allowed to go outside. I know a lot of people don't even want to go outside, but you know, from what all the experts are saying, if you practice social distancing, you can take a walk, you know, or if you have exercise equipment at home, you know, any type of hard exercise, it, it will discharge just the trauma chemicals that are building up within us because trauma chemicals are building up within us. And what we don't want to happen is for, again, those to cause all these physical manifestations of illness when we're all done with this. So anything you can do to discharge the energy, the emotions, the chemicals that's being just flooded, our bodies are being flooded with and trying to just deal and cope with this trauma is, is, is advised. Um, for all my clients that have done the TRE training, the trauma release exercise training with me, implement that, you know, find, get yourself into a, a routine of doing that a couple of times a day if you need to. Um, prayer and meditation, you know, we, we, some, we just got to go within. Uh, at times we can't. So I've seen a lot of posts that says we can't go outside. So let's go within. So going within, uh, putting on some great music. God bless all the local DJs, the international DJs that are helping to keep our spirits up by put giving these virtual parties. And, you know, we're able to connect with this music that we love. I myself, I was looking for some cartoons the other day to watch on television. I'm talking about some old school Looney Tunes cartoons. I needed something to just take myself back into just a, a better um, frame of mind. But whatever, you know, if you're going to watch TV, watch something that's that's comical. Watch something that's going to, again, not just inundate you, inundate you with the reality that's going out here. And that's not detaching from reality, but that's protecting yourself right now. OK, I see Timothy saying he minimizes his social media because it's overwhelming. Um, and um, Kim Marie said she stopped watching the news two weeks ago because I couldn't take it. And that's the fine line, because we want to know what's going on. We need to be aware. But at the same time, we have to protect ourselves. So if you need to read the news or limit yourself to five minutes to the news, whatever it, it requires, protect yourself, protect yourself. Um, Judy says, schoolhouse rock is the ticket. Yeah, so even on this, um, when I'm done with this, just post just some things you're you're doing that just helps you get through it. I'm a, I'm an old 70s sitcom kind of girl, so it, if I could if I tune into some old 70s sitcoms, like I feel better. I can I can actually feel myself just going back to that state in time. Um, warm baths, hot showers, journal. It's okay. Writing is a good way. Believe it or not, just like exercise, exercising will discharge. Writing will discharge too. Journaling. That's why it's oftentimes recommended by therapists because it's get whatever you can do that can get it out, get it out. So if it's exercising, if it's talking, if it's journaling, we need to get what's what's being built up within us. We need to get it out. So a lot of times we're re, um, surprised that the reactions to trauma can do these things to us, these behavioral, these emotional, these physical things to us, you know, but it's part it, it, and, and we're surprised that they last longer than we expected because sometimes it can take weeks, it can take months for us to find ourselves back into the state of equilibrium that we're used to. But again, we're going to get there. And as I said on my last broadcast, you never, you, you don't hear me say we're going to get back to normal because something like this shifts what normal is. So we're going to get back to a new normal because now we have this experience. Our whole landscape of life has been changed in a, a matter of two weeks time, you know, and again, that's so taxing. It's like, putting, you know, uh, it's like an elevator that has a 500 pound limit and you're putting 1500 pounds on that elevator. It's taxing. It's taxing. And we run the risk of collapsing if we don't recognize just how taxing it is and do the things that's necessary for us to process it properly. Um, and I want to leave you guys with this. Um, I read this the other day and I thought it was just so, um, 
it, it just helped to put things in perspective. I see Val V. Lynn saying she finally picked up her camera the other day and she felt so unmotivated lately. So, you know, again, tapping into whatever um, passions you guys may have, photography, if it's writing, if it's drawing, my, my daughter, you know, who won't be having a graduation ceremony, you know, she's a senior this year and has been accepted to art school, um, you know, very disappointing, of course, uh, but she's been just spending all her time just drawing, just doing the things because that's discharging for her. But tap into whatever you're passionate about because that's so important. Cooking for me um, is something, you know, I'm passionate and I love doing. So that takes my mind off things while I'm cooking. So whatever it may be for you, reading, you know, um, just find things that's going to help you just get out of your head and in the moment. We always talk about the mindfulness. And in my book, um, Bloom, I talk about making sense of your senses. So tapping into your five senses during this time, you know, look at things that are um, pleasing to you and appealing to you. You know, listen to things that make you feel good. For me, music makes me feel good. Listen to music, listen to water, listen to, I, you know, I put on my YouTube channel, I uploaded that gong meditation session that I did a few weeks ago. Those of you who are on my Patreon platform, I've uploaded a few more new gong meditation sessions. Listen to things that are pleasing and relaxing to you. You know, put on nice smelling candles, aromatherapy, you know, all the senses, anything you can tap into sense wise that is appealing helps us process it and it helps us get into this calm state so even the sense of taste so that's why you know right now even though we want to make sure we're not overindulging or overeating i don't i wouldn't want anyone just denying themselves of something that that even tastes good you know because right now we need to tune into our senses to kind of help tune out and process what's going on now but again i read something the other day and it said the Chinese character for the word crises. So the word crises, you know how, you know, Chinese language and they have the characters. And a, but it said the Chinese character for the word crises actually contains two different words in it. And the two different words are danger and opportunity. And I found that just so like, wow. Because even though we're in this midst of a crisis now, there's so much opportunity that resides here as well. And that opportunity can be just you finding better appreciation about the people around you, you understanding what really matters in life. Um, like at this point, if, you know, people who thought they knew what mattered in life, you know, the, the designer clothes or, you know, this, this new handbag or what have you, all that stuff is so irrelevant now, you know. So we're, we have the opportunity to just, get back to the basics of what really, really matters in life, the people, the relationships, and to understand the fragility of life and understand just how things that, you know, we assume is going to always be a certain type of way can change in an instant because this is where we are now. So I want you guys to just leave with that and keep that. The, to danger, even though there's danger, there's crises, there's lots of opportunity here. And I want you to spend some time thinking about what opportunities there are for you to just even build a better you on the other side of this thing, because we're going to get to the other side. Like I said, every storm runs out of rain. We just got to ride this wave right now, this wave that we're in, and we, we can do it collectively. So I thank you guys for joining me. Share this video, share your thoughts, share your comments. I'll be coming back you know, periodically, um, and you're going to see a side of me probably you've never seen before, but I'm not apologizing for being emotional because I'm, I'm hurting. You know, I got some people close to me who right now are fighting this thing. And I just want you guys to just be safe, be safe, be smart, stay home. And, you know, let's, let's just trust, you know, trust the process and trust we'll get through it. Love you all. Thanks.